Welcome everyone. Today we'll learn how to create a serverless code API with Azure Functions and Entity Framework Co. So the first step is to create a new Azure Functions project on Visual Studio. Define the name, select a location, click Next. As a Functions Worker, we'll use .NET 8 and a function will select an HTTP3 function. You can use Azure it for enable local stretch development. And the authorization level, let's give it as function, create the project. The second step is to add the connection to a local SQL Server database and create the schema. So for this demo, I will use SQL Express. In the Solution Explorer, go to the local settings.json and add the connection string. So we will create a new shop database. So open this SQL Server Object Explorer Visual Studio. Click this icon to create a new connection. Define the server name, which will be localhost SQL Express. Encrypt, define as false and trust server certificate as true. Click connect, go to the databases and create a new one with the shop name. And now right click and add a new query. So let me copy a query. So with this query, I will create a new product table with three rows. The first one will be the ideas, primary key, the name and the price. And we'll insert two products on the query, close the query. The next step is to add the entity framework code configuration. So open a package manager console to add the required nugget package. So type install package Microsoft that entity framework code that SQL server. Execute the command. Now open the solution explorer and add the shop context. Create a new class. So at the entity framework configuration in this context, this class will inherit from DB context. And then in the constructor, we'll pass the DB context options, pass to the base constructor, and add a new property to define the DB set for the product table. We will access this product table with this DB set, define the product class. So add a new class called product with the three properties. The first one will be the ID, add two more for the name and the price. Now go to the program.cs file to add the DB context through dependency injection. So open the program.cs file and in the configure services section, add the DB context. So create a new variable to get the connection stream by calling environment that get environment variable. Pass the name of the variable, go to the local settings.json and copy the name. Now we just simply call services that add db context, pass the shop context class as a generic parameter, and then in the options we'll call use SQL server and pass the connection stream. The next step is to implement the Azure functions to create the serverless CRUD API. So go to the HTTP trigger function that we already have, replace the name as get products for the class and for the function, we can remove this logger injection and add the shop context through dependency injection that we already added in the program.cs file. So by constructor, inject in this context, that's it. So in the run function, we'll add all the logic to get the products. So in this case, it will be a get action. So get the products by calling shop contents that product and get the list asynchronously. And we just simply return the products in the object result. This is an asynchronous operation. So we need to define this I action result as a task. Now it's time to test this function run the project, copy the function URL, go to Postman and paste the URL. It will be a get action, so send a request. And we get the two products already added in the query. Go back to Visual Studio and implement the remaining CRUD operations. The next one will be to create a product. So in the Solution Explorer, add a new class called create product. Let me copy this code, replace the name of the constructor, the name of the function, we'll inject the same short contents, 
we will use the post action. So first of all, we need to get the string from the body of the request. So add a new property called body, and then we'll create a new stream reader based on the request body, and then read to the end asynchronously all the body. And then this body will deserialize this string into a product object. So add a new property called product and then call JSON convert. We need to install a nugget package called newtonsoft.json. So install the latest version and call the deserialize object method by passing as a generic type the product class and the body we want to deserialize. And then we just simply call shop context that add asynchronously the product at the await keyword and save the changes and we'll return the ID of the new product and that's it. Now create the update product function. Go to the solution explorer, add a new class, call update product, copy this code again replace the name of the construction, the name of the function, and in this case will be a put action. We'll deserialize the body. So we'll create a new string reader to get the body and then deserialize the object. But here we need to get the old product that we want to update. So we will use shop context that product that find asynchronously based on the ID. So let's add a simple validation. If the old product is null, we'll return an not found result. This will be a new object. Otherwise, we'll update the properties of a product. So call old product that name. It will be the new product or the updated product that name. Similarly for the price field. And then we'll save the changes and we'll return a no content result and that's it. The next cloud operation will be to delete a product. So add a function, let's name it as delete product. Go back and copy the same code. So for the delete product, rename the construction, the function. And in this case, we'll pass the ID of the product by a root or from root. So this will be a delete action. And here in the HTTP trigger properties, we'll add the root, which will be delete product and define the ID from root. So add the ID parameter. Now we'll find the product based on the ID. So we need to transform this ID to width, so call width that parse by passing the ID. Rename this property as product. So if the product is null, we'll return a not found result. Otherwise, we'll just simply call shop contents that product that remove and pass the product and finally save the changes and return a no content result. And the last cloud operation we will add is to get a product based on the ID. So add a new function called get product. Go back and let me copy this code, rename the construction, the function, it will be a get action and rename or change the root that will be get product and get the ID from root. So we'll get the product. If the product is null, we'll return not from result. Otherwise, we'll return an OK object result with the product. And that's it. It's time to test the CROD functions. So from the project, let's create a product. So copy the function URL, go to postman, and in the second tab, I have this body. So we'll create a product with this name and price. So it will be a post action, send the request. Before copying this value, go back to the console and copy the URL for the get product function. Copy the URL and go to the get product by ID. Copy the function URL and replace this ID to the new ID of the product. Send request. And we have the information about the product. Now update the product. So in the put operation, let me copy the ID and replace or update the name and the price. 
So go back to the console and copy the function URL, send the request, and it returns a 204 no content status code. So how to verify that the product is updated? Go back to the get product by the URL, send requests, and you see the properties are updated. Finally, let's delete the product. So let me copy this function URL. This will be a delete product and will be a delete action, send request, and it's successful. Now go to the first action to get the products and we see the initial two products. So the product is deleted successfully. So in this demo, we learn how to create a serverless CRUD API with Azure Functions and Entity Framework Core.